The NBA All-Star break ends with the passing of Laker owner Dr. Jerry Buss. Is he the most successful owner in the history of American sports? Item two, LeBron and Michael, the comparison raged on as Michael Jordan turned 50. Is it too early to even discuss it with LeBron's career still going forward? And lastly, Cal coach Mike Montgomery pushes a player during a timeout against USC, not suspended. More on that when we get back. And greetings, everyone. Uh, Channel 34 here in Montclair, New Jersey. Welcome to the Three Wise Men. I am Al Renato, a.k.a. Al from White Plains, with my partners, the hometown hero, Mike Goldstein, uh, also known to, I'm sure, all of you as Mike from Montclair, and Dennis D'Addario, a.k.a. Uh, Denny from Yonkers. First of all, fellas, after our experience on the radio here uh, a few years ago, it's good to be back. It's great to be back with you guys. Who would have thunk it? Eight, nine years later, two championships for the Giants. One for the Yankees, should have been flip-flop, but we'll take it. Mikey, yeah, good to be with you guys. Back in, Mon back in old Montclair, beautiful back, old Montclair. Back in old Montclair with a lot to talk about. Um, as we hit the All-Star break in the NBA, all the talk was on Michael Jordan's 50th birthday, and uh, everybody... Over the top uh, of it. Huh? A, a, a bet, a bet, uh, agreeing that he was the best ever, and the endless comparisons from LeBron James, who's playing great basketball right now. But we came out of the All-Star break, and that's what I want to start on first, uh, with the untimely passing of uh, Dr. Jerry Buss, who was the owner of the Lakers uh, since 1979. Ten championships, 16 trips to the finals. Mike, I'll start with you. Uh, most successful owner in the history of American sports? Well, you know I'm not going to agree with that. I think, it, I think George Steinbrenner still holds the bill. His family's won six championships under their tenure in a sport that's much, much harder to win championships than in basketball. In basketball, you got five guys in a court. You put two guys in a court like uh, Kobe and Shaq, you're going to win your share of championships. And I'm not dismissing what he's done, but I'm just telling you, I will take six over Steinbrenner's tenure rather than ten over Buss's tenure just because it is much harder to win championships in baseball. And in fact, in David Stern's 30-year career, I think there's only been eight different champions in the NBA. Yeah, but you're splitting, you're splitting here is here. Um, the, the thing in Steinbrenner's favor would be he took a, an organization that was a mess with CBS, from CBS, made one of the great investments of all time, $8 million bucks, and turned him into a billion-dollar business, whereas Buss had a successful franchise that he picked up Jabari. in the late 70s. Yeah, they, were, they had had the history, but you can't shortchange what the guy did. And, and when, you, when you hear the word visionary used, as it is used, in his eulogies over the past day or so, that's a big deal but to what, me. Wait, wait, I, I heard the same thing, visionary. So what was the vision that he put dancers on the court, that he made it enter, that he made going to the games more entertaining? Yeah. Big is that what he is known for? Well, not, just, not just what he's known for, but in, in response to both of you. Uh, first of all, clearly he brought entertainment to the NBA. Uh, when he came in, and even in his first year when they won 79-80, as I know you remember, we watched those finals on tape delay. Uh, when Magic Johnson scored 42 points, when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was hurt. Um, and correct I, me if I'm wrong, they're giving him credit for being uh, pretty influential in getting those things live, right? Absolutely, as well as the fact that despite... You know, the scenario with respect to the market, he was one of the ones who pushed for revenue sharing. In regard to the 10 championships versus the six, you know, let's remember this, this was the New York Yankees. Now they were down for a while when George Steinbrenner came in and they had not won a title, okay, uh, in what, 13 years? Their organization was from a mess. From the early 60s. Okay. From the mid 60s on, they were one of the worst teams right. in the American well, CBS League. ignored them completely. Yeah, right. no, they were awful. And he, he changed everything. And I, my only point, I'm not dismissing or I'm not trying to say that he wasn't a great owner. He obviously was. I didn't know much, to be honest with you. I've, I've done a lot of reading since he's died. Mm -hmm. But he was a dentist. winning in baseball, because there are so many different components to winning a championship on a baseball field, basketball, you put two great players on the court. A supporting cast around him, you're going to win your share of championships. Yeah, but two, I, two great players, first of all, were not enough in the prime of the Showtime Lakers because you had, in, in our lifetimes, the golden era of the NBA. 
where you had three and four great players, and they weren't just the Lakers and the Celtics. You had teams that those teams had to defeat in the second and third rounds of the playoffs that would win championships today. There was that much talent in the league. And let's remember, you know, not only 10 championships, but 16 trips to the finals. And contrary to what a lot of people believe, you know, the Lakers were not this championship juggernaut. No, but they, again, won, they, won, they won one championship consistently in, Lo winning. in Los Angeles. Six, consistently eight, 16 a winner. trips to the finals, Listen. again, in a sport where it's ultimately much easier just to get into the playoffs. Well, nobody else is even close. All right, guys, since I don't have a dog in this fight, I'll say this. I don't think it's necessary to say one was better than they were both. Icon we have a little tougher time relating to bus because we don't live in L.A. Mm -hmm. We don't know that impact. We know the impact of Steinberg right. here. Right. Um, I would, in their respective sports, two of the giants in ownership that there were. I but mean, I've I can't. A, but I've, I've asked you who in your mind is the more successful. I, I've asked you, is Jerry Buss the most successful in the history of American Sports as an as a what's team the owner. criteria? Is it money? Is it wins? Is it championships? You could put I mean, all the above in for either one. Of them. I, I'll one tell you, out in center field? it okay. is extremely close. I think it. I think it's fair to say, in each in every because I can't think of another guy in basketball who really tops bus, and you know you had Connie Mack in baseball going back and what he did with the Phillies and the A's, but uh, with the A's I'm sorry the old Philly A's. Um, but I can't think of any you know guys who had the kind of impact that Steinbrenner had either. They're both right at the top, and I don't know. I think you're splitting hairs here. Well, we, if you want to have a, def you'll get your yeses from L.A. and you'll get your yeses from New York. That's how it's going to be decided. But there's, but in in their own time, they were both giants in, in their game and what they did for their organizations. Although Steinbrenner, I do give a, a slight nod to Steinbrenner in this respect. He took an organization that was a mess and could have stayed a mess for the next 20 years if he didn't put a stamp on it. And used free agency to his advantage. I'll say. Took advantage of it, and, you know, that was really his calling card. And with respect to Buss, what I will say is, uh, unlike George, what Buss finally did for Laker fans is he felled the Giants. Because remember, I mean, the you Lakers are the Celtics, fr the mean? Lakers are the franchise of record, uh, you know, for the last quarter century in the NBA, and they had never beaten the Celtics. Right. And not only did he win all those championships, but he finally, under his uh, ownership, and obviously with the great players, and you know, having discovering basically Pat Riley as a head coach, and bringing in Phil Jackson and Jerry West as the GM all those years, they finally felled the Celtics in the finals. And ultimately, for a Laker fan, that is the brass ring. It's not just winning, it's finally beating and the That's Celtics, why Nicholson which sits they've courtside. Done, which I mean, he made sure he times. had, these, both these guys made sure they had stars. Right. They understood the star system. They, you know, uh, I'm going to digress for a minute. The Giants, who are now two-time champions in the last three years, aren't that star system team. These guys, Buss and Steinbrenner, knew the value of the star system but and much what it meant to their arenas, what it meant to their networks, what it meant to the TV ratings, popularity of their team. And in, in the long, I, and, and Bus had the vehicle by which to do the entertainment thing more so. Hollywood, LA. basketball, LA. much more, and, and much he, more conducive and to that. And he played it to the max. And he did. And But Steinbrenner, you know, I mean, listen, those yeah. press conferences were priceless. Yeah, yeah. He, listen, Steinbrenner, I, I think the fairest thing to say is they're both giants when it comes to owners. Yeah, in their no respective the sports, it. without question. Since we're on the topic of the NBA, mm -hmm. um, obviously we talked at length with the, the untimely passing of Dr. Buss, which kind of overcame what we were going to open with in regard uh, to the All-Star break. But when we come back, I want to get your opinions on all this talk about Michael and LeBron, and is it even, is it even merited at this stage of LeBron's career? All that when we come back. qualified tax specialists available nearby to help you claim credits that you may not know you're eligible for. And the best news is that it's totally free. Dial 211 to find out about free tax preparation sites in this area. Three wise men are back. 
when we left, we were on NBA and all the chatter before the passing of Jerry Buss, uh, the week-long debate uh, over Michael Jordan, leading up to Michael Jordan's 50th birthday, was the comparison between the greatest player of all time and the current greatest player in the NBA, at least thought by most, LeBron James. Michael, is the comparison timely? Is it premature? If it's timely, what's your position on it? It's only premature until LeBron amasses more championships. The NBA is all about championships because there's only a few players on the court. In other sports, it takes a much larger supporting cast. So in my mind, until he gets a few more championships under his belt, it's not even worth discussing. Do I think he's a better all-around player than Michael Jordan? 100%. Do I think he's going to have a long and storied career? 100%. But until he gets at least three or four more championships, There'll, there'll be no comparison, what there'll be no him, more discussion. What makes him a better player in your mind than Jordan? That's he's just physically me. bigger and physically stronger. Physically, he's bigger one. and stronger. And that's a big that part. That's, a better that's player? A, that's a, no, it doesn't make him a better player, but it helps make him a better player. He can do more. He, he, can, he can play pretty much every position on the court you needed him to. He can play a point guard. He can play a shooting guard. He can play with his back to the basket, which is what he's been doing of late. The man can play any position on the court. He can dominate any game from any position on the court. I think he's a better shooter than Jordan. I don't think Jordan was ever a great shooter. I think LeBron's a better shooter. I think he goes to the basket better. I think he plays certainly as good defense. I guess the one knock is he doesn't pass as well as Jordan. But again, until he puts a few more championships championships on the board, it's not going to be up for discussion. I, I'm going to disagree with you on about three of those counts, Denny. The, you, I'll I'll take let, one let, of them. Let, let me uh, in, in the you know the fast food mentality of the sports world, we want to jump everybody ahead. The, the guy who's the guy who is in the conversation first is Kobe, who has five rings, is on the back nine of his career, or the back three. And how many more years do you think he has, by the way? I never asked you that. I, I think he's going to put together... Al's the Laker at, fan, at, by the at, way, folks. At least, at least three more quality years. Okay. So he's on the back nine. And, you know, for, for LeBron's career still has to play out. Whether he goes back to Cleveland, whether he stays in Miami... He's a 6'9", 260-pound monster. He does everything that Jordan can do. Now, let's understand this. Michael was a, an all-defensive, on the all-defensive team, NBA first team, I believe, nine or eight or nine straight times. Michael was also Defensive Player of the Year yeah. one year. I mean, let's this remember. is, so that's where I'm you know, have to do we're, at, on the we're at the highest, we're, we're at the notion, apex notion of the NBA. Of, and, and let's remember, I, I mean, I'm, we're, we're... Well, let me ask you a question. We're, we're picking here can I, amongst you know, greatness. Can I ask and, you a question, the, both of you? You know, what? The, the, you know, the cream of the crop. Do we know that Kevin Durant's not going to move into the conversation? He's not. He, that, that's very premature. Well, no, it is, but I, I agree with that, you. That's so very premature. But that's my point. So is LeBron at this stage also. Well, I mean, it's a couple of, LeBron's been in the league now, what, six, seven years? Seven years. Okay, so I mean, I don't think it's premature. Well, you've got to let just, that career play he, out. He, I, no, I totally agree with that, but he need, listen. What if, Durant, he, what if Durant collects three if, or four wait, 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 uh, if his numbers, If his numbers continue to stay where they are now, points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, and so on and so on and so on, and he puts three or four championships up in this era, I think it's comparable to what Jordan did. But that's in why era. the comparison is more, is more valid, Bryant. Jordan, which I, which I, and I think Jordan gets the nod. Well, the but Brian Jordan, Jordan would agree with then, you. Then James, well, he does because the theory going around is that LeBron's a threat to Michael's legacy and Kobe will never get there. They point. are much more comparable in terms of the style of play. I Meaning think we'll agree Col on much Kobe more. and Jordan. Kobe. Much Absolutely. Jordan. And with regard to LeBron, the guy that really comes to mind in terms of the style of play and the size is Magic Johnson. And frankly, if you gave a Kobe... A guy who could play all positions. He doesn't now. Magic Johnson did not have the, does not have the physical slash athleticism he could, he could, of LeBron James. He couldn't shoot with LeBron. He uh, he was just Mike I, LeBron. I, I, I like LeBron. I, I, did I, not come I, in a great was, shooter. He was a set shooter. I, I think you're, he took set shots. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. but LeBron did but not come in a great shooter, six, Mike. Nine. He's LeBron, made himself. I, I think you're overrating LeBron's ability to shoot the basketball. But a couple things LeBron will never have uh, versus Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan has two things that can trump everybody. Number one, LeBron nor anyone else is never going to go to six finals win them all, and be the most valuable player of all six of those finals. Well, that would be impossible. That's impossible, because there's one guy who's done it, and only one guy who's ever going to do it. Item two, LeBron has already lost an NBA final with a better team. Michael, with a Dwayne Wade or a Scottie Pippen, was never losing to that Dallas Mavericks. I agree. No, no problem with the loss to the Spurs, carry the Cavs, 
clearly the better team. But you can't go down as the best player in history, no matter what happens the rest of the way, over Michael Jordan with that finals loss. So you've already, it sounds like you've already cast your vote. Absolutely. And his career is not nearly over. Okay, so, Absolutely. so what does he have to do to change your mind? It doesn't he sound can't. like you can change, change he can't. your mind. He's, He's got a loss. Something. He's got a mark on that resume, mm -hmm. which means he can never be as great as the other. So guy. all things being equal, if both guys were starting their careers today and you could pick one of them, who would you pick? Michael Jordan. Well, then we go. Kenny? I'm going to I'm going to abstain. No, I'm going to abstain. I can't do it with uh, Brian has played I, I half feet career. James, just based on his physicality. You're con his but size. you're 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 they're projecting. Both, they're both, of course I'm projecting. Well, yeah, it's but a hypothetical I, question. They're both 21 years old today in today's NBA. I take which, Jordan. Which, I take, then I take Jordan. You take Jordan. Yes. Okay. I have to. And, and, and I think LeBron is ridiculous. Yeah. But, uh, and that guy now, and now that takes us, your argument would take us back to, I hate to beat a dead horse, Bill Russell, who was the aircraft carrier for 11 championships. So what do we say about him? He also lost the final. And there's, you can talk. To he's, Bob Pettit talks and said. He, well, he's, he's the hmm. greatest winner in the history of the NBA. But, I, I mean, are we really going to sit here and he say. He was the centerpiece of that are, team. Are, are we really going to sit here and say that Bill Russell was a more dominant center and better player than either of the Bill Chamberlain or Kareem abdul Jabbar because he had more championships? I would not. I mean, probably. I probably would not. Although he was, although if you want to throw the mental aspect in there, he buries Will. That's where Will, that was where Will failed. Miserably, uh -uh. time and time again, and, and that's where I, you know, Michael Jordan clearly superior also to LeBron James and everybody else because he had a, a, you would cut your heart out, as would as would a, 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 as would Russell, right? But in terms of the physical dominance, you know, uh, there, his offensive ability compared to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Will Chamberlain isn't even in the same building. Those guys were what was a dominant defensive player. Not to the extent that Russell was. Well, Will was wanted to lead the league in scoring, he did. Rebounding, he did. Assists, he did. And the only thing he could that. never lead the league in is foul shooting percentage. Well, I mean, no, he him, couldn't. Him, but him and Shaq with that. But it's the it's up here that well, where where the greats are uh, separated a lot of the time. And I I, I want to get to an issue we can both relate to, which involves younger kids, uh, y younger players, and that's the Mike Montgomery uh, issue that happened the other night with the USC game. Back to talk about that right after this. Did you know you can have your taxes done for free right in your own neighborhood? Thanks to United Way, you don't have to spend money on your tax preparation to get money back. I am one of hundreds of volunteers trained by the IRS, and I'm here to help you get the tax credits you deserve. Dial 211 to find out about locations in this area. Three wise men are back. Um, we left off. By the way, can I interject a minute? Wise implying wise and not old, I hope. I, but no, I, 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 ever... I don't know if you can be wise without being well, in this room, I don't feel old. Uh, thanks a lot. Being the youngest. You're both a bunch of... <laughs> uh, when we left off... That was a shot at me, folks. Uh, I, I wanted to get to Mike Montgomery. The other night, you guys know what happened. I'm sure you've seen the... the Saw the clip. The clip. If you haven't, by now, you can all YouTube it. Well, explain it to uh, our audience quickly. And uh, during the, uh, the Cal-USC game, Cal, the better team, was struggling uh, in a Pac-12 game against USC. And when they came off the court during a timeout... Mike Montgomery gave, and you guys fill in the blank, pushed, gently shoved, certainly made contact with his best player because he was not happy with the way his best player was going about playing the game. Two-hand jab. Uh, yeah, it was more of a jab. Two-hand jab. Shove. And a hard two-hand jab. Alan Kraft, who was his best player, responded by scoring 14 of his 23 points after that. And will be an NBA player, by the way. And USC uh, took a beating. After that, Cal came back and, and beat them, I don't say handily, but you know, by, 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 by I think eight. Yeah. I think it was a 17 point turnaround. 76, 68, something like that. So, Mike Montgomery's. Led by Crab, by the Mike way. Mike Montgomery's response, first response in the press conference after his own question was, it worked. Not smart. Let's leave that aside. <laughs> not for a smart. He was reprimanded by the Pac 12, not suspended. And he was not suspended uh, by Cal. A lot of people are calling for 
a suspension. A lot of people are calling for him to be suspended for the year. A lot of people are calling him to be fired. You've got girls who play scholastic sports. You are going to be coaching scholastic sports at the high school level this year. He put his hands on a player. Suspended or not suspended? What do you think? Not suspended. Not at that level. Not, uh, not with... I, hate, I don't want to sound like a sexist, but not with guys, okay? It's a little different. As a coach, I've been coaching girls softball this year. You can never put your hands on a, on a girl uh, under any circumstance, okay? I, I saw That's the a double standard, though. Well, right? there is a double standard. I mean, we live in a world of double standards. But Absolutely. I, I, I think, I think when, it, when it came to that clip, I didn't think what he did was egregious. I didn't agree with it. There was also another player and I can't tell you who the player was since I don't follow Cal basketball, who immediately got in between him, and then he, got very, then he, got, right. he got very physical with the player himself. In, in other words, he sort of took the role as a captain and started scolding the kid himself and got very physical with him. I think the kid got the message, I'm not telling you the coach is right, but I don't think after watching Bobby Knight's antics for years and years and years, and he actually put his hands around a guy's neck, Neil a Reed. player's neck, mm -hmm. uh, this was tame in comparison to my mind. And Mike Montgomery has a clean resume. Yeah, which also it, it, has, so, so I, I, I think it shows well on YouTube. You know, it's something that gives us something to talk about, but I don't think he should be suspended. It, it, here's a guy who was at Stanford. He's, he's coached, the predominance of his career has been coached in the Northern California area. Um, I've, I, I spend some time out there, and I've spoken to a lot of people about him when it came to college basketball because I like to find out what's going on in that sport because I'm a college basketball junkie. And he, has an, he had an impeccable reputation. I don't agree with the double standard. Sean Woods this year in the Ohio Valley got suspended for a game when he did less, in my opinion, than Montgomery did. Grabbed a kid by his shirt, pulled him over to the bench. And... Uh, well, that he, could be more, I mean, depending on how he pulled them, that could certainly play out more egregiously Mike, than what he did. He you put your, hand, the you kid. put your hands on your players. I don't think this should have been the case in 1940s either. Coaches, I think if you put, put their hands I don't on the players all the time. Where? where, where? Woody, Woody, um, Woody Hayes did that to the Clemson kid, and it cost a well, venerable that, guy his job. Well, that way, that, that but you should his hands on his own player. He put his, well, he well, now we're going to, yeah, but are we going to, are we, what are we going to do? We're going to start to, Clemson? We're going to start to qualify what is right about putting your hands on kids? Yeah, why not? I, have, I, I can tell you this. In, in this instance, that's what I'm asking you to do. Mm -hmm. Mike, Mike has, has really quantified it by the fact that he put his hands on the kid, but the extent of what he did was okay with you. I thought he was verbally more assaultive than the actual Well, guy. you have to factor that but, in, too. But, so on, it on worked, end, didn't it? But on your end, you're telling me that you put your hands on the kid, you got to be suspended. Well, I mean, if I put my hands on a kid like this. No, that's, that's not what we're talking about. No, we're talking about a two-hand jab, which he you know, was, it wasn't like he. You see guys do that when they make a good play. Hey, you know what I'm saying? That oh, was wait, not how, the case how many, here. How many football coaches take their kids by the face mask and give them a you ringing? Don't, you don't see that much anymore, Mike. Well, you see, okay. Now, you shouldn't have seen it back then. That didn't make it all right back then. And I'm, I'm not, not. I'm not telling you. I'm a guy. You right. can discipline. But hey, what's, what the, what's the way you discipline a player? Take his playing time away. Send him to the locker room. He wasn't going to take that kid's playing time away. He well, that's kid. that's principle. Reprimand okay with you? No, should have been suspended. If Sean Woods was suspended the game, he should have been suspended. The I, game. I'm, I, I'm I'm with Michael. In, in this namby pamby world where everybody is calling for you know, anytime you, you breathe heavy on somebody, uh, you know, there's it's, enough, the, the, it's the, not about the, political the, correctness the, now. I, the, I, I am. It's time, you know, that a coach at least be afforded. A little room when he does something that he thinks is necessary to get his team into the scheme of, of a game. He picks out a kid who he thinks is not hustling. He challenges him. He gets in his face. He doesn't physically assault the kid. Do I say it's wrong? Technically, it's wrong. That's why he got reprimanded. And in my mind, considering Mike Montgomery's resume, that's enough. Let me flip in it around. Instance. Let me flip it around. What if it was your kid? If it's my kid... I've met with that coach because my son's been offered a scholarship. I've signed off on that coach. If my kid's lollygagging up and down the court, and he's the best player on the, on, the, on the team, and my coach that I've signed off on thinks it's necessary to do that, I know it's difficult, but based upon what I saw, I'm okay with it. I'm 100% with Alanette. In other words, if my kid's playing for that coach, 
and as you said, you signed up for this guy. Okay, you knew what he was about. Okay, and my kid, in my own eyes, was lollygagging up and down the court or not pulling his weight. And my coach went up, or my kid's coach went up and did the little thing to his chest. That wasn't a little. Yeah, that was a shot, Mike. No, now, no, 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 come on. Respect, that was a two-hand jab. Denny, 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 Denny. The kid barely felt it. I think the kid was more humiliated by his own play and that he was going to get a tongue lashing from his coach. I, I think that added to it. But to answer your question, I'd have absolutely no problem with him. And that's the way I, I'm none, looking at it. None. I'm looking at it from the question he just asked because you know I signed off on this coach. Because I have a feeling, how do you know that kid's parents weren't in the stands? You sh I, I don't know that okay. they were in the stands. So, I'm assuming I mean, that maybe they from, were. Have you heard anything from his parents? I have not. Parents? But I, I didn't. I didn't look for it afterwards. What I'd, what I'd say about Bobby the, Knight choke a player. That doesn't make two. No, 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 two, two wrongs don't make the right. I saw Bobby Knight take a chair and wing it. And I'm not the court. soft. I think hey, get in his face, take his playing time away, bet, throw him off the team if you want. All right, so you you want you want a one game suspension. So so we're, I we're, should, if Sean Woods got it, I thought he should okay, have got well, it. So, they so set a standard. So they set a bar. The reprimand's enough for you, right? I don't think he needed I guess you could tell, slap his hand and say, hey, don't do that again. Yeah, I'm, what I'm, if he does I'm, it again? I'm fine with that. Then we got a problem. You but, slap the other hand. But, but, you, but you can't base your decision on what if he does it again. No, this I'm not is, basing on that. This is an isolated I'm basing on this instance. One. It's the first time we had this type of scenario. Well, it was Sean this Woods' first time, too. Got, this, this coach has built up a lot better resume over a longer period of time than Sean Woods. Mm. I want to get to this before we go because we got about 90 seconds. Um, and you are renowned for this. Uh, March Madness is a couple weeks away. Huge games tonight, especially with Michigan State number four. There is on. no huge game. That, let, let me finish. So let oh, me finish. Come on. So let me finish. Yeah, Mike. As, as, we, as we're two weeks away from March no Madness, we've got one against four tonight in the Big Ten. Indiana against Michigan State, Breslin Arena um, at Michigan State, which should be a tremendous game. Do these games matter? No. No. To, to Michigan State? Give me the teams they matter to. To, to. to the college basketball fans and the college basketball scheme of things, should this should you care about watching this game? Does this game matter no. to you? No, Since absolutely not. How about the only thing that matters to the average college basketball fan? The only thing that matters to the audience at large out there is what the is the, is the tournament and you know is March Madness. That's it. That's so you say the regular matters. season's meaningless. They have rendered it meaningless. Meaning they've rendered the season end tournaments meaningless. What? Does anyone care? Who, who wins the ACC tournament anymore, whether Duke or North Carolina wins it. Does, does anyone care who wins the Big East unless it's Seton Hall who let's, needs to win let's it to stay get with, That's the another Okay, that's let's an stay, argument for another day. Season. Let's stay with the Because you know my four teams. The regular season. Season. season is more meaningless. It just doesn't mean uh, anything. As uh, long as your team gets their 17 Mike, to 20 Mike, wins. Mike, 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 i got to stop you. How do you – how do we decide who, team, who the final at-large teams are if we don't have a regular season? And by the way, a 16 has never beaten a 1. Tonight's game could determine a 1 seed as opposed to being a 2. Okay. How do you, I but mean. Who cares? Who well, cares that, we, that, that's two? part of the, that's part of the essence of the tournament. Watch. I just told you, a 16 has never beaten a 1 under, the new form, under this format. 15s have beaten 2s. Yeah. You think you want to be a 1? Yeah. yeah. Now, I am a huge college basketball fan. I, I would say you are. Probably would qualify yourself as the average college basketball player. Yeah. Okay, and you are a fanatic. Junkie. The best way I can respond to what you said is when you say, you know, who cares? If you watch these kids play, you see who cares. These kids play these regular season games like their tournament games. Well, I hope so, because they, then when they get to the NBA, they, you know, they lollygag up and down a court. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, but they, these kids don't all get to the NBA. Okay. That's the point. This is Mike's general. Basketball yeah, bias. Yeah, yeah you, you despise the sport of basketball no, since, you never, since you never made it past not, bit, I, since you never made it past bitty basketball. You know when you were a stud then, and that ended quickly. The point is, <laughs> these guys play every game, not even in the tournament. You watch these kids play in the regular season; they play like they would walk through hell in a gasoline suit to keep playing. That's the best way I can put it. I hope so. so. They're 18, 19, 20 years old. They should play like that, and I'm not taking anything away from them. But I'm just telling you, who cares what happens in November and well, December? How do we determine? How do we form the, the majority tournament? of the three wise men? Do care, all right? And that's the way we're going to close it tonight. Can't wait till our uh, our, our next meeting. For now, I am Al Renato slash uh, Al from White Plains for the hometown hero Mike Goldstein and Denny D'Addario. Back with more three wise men next time we meet. Thank you.